A to Z optimization guide. This guide will get you the lowest latency in competitive games like Fortnite or Valorant. So as an intro, we're gonna be doing a dual boot. This means you will have two Windows images on your PC at the same time, and that way, A, you don't have to delete any of your files, 2. You don't have to reinstall the games, and 3. You always have your old Windows image, which means that you will always have compatibility. I don't suggest using it as just one Windows, because it can have some features disabled. So let's start. Download these two files that I have in the bio. My ISO and window, install Windows without USB. First, we have to check if you can use Windows. To do that, press Windows key, type tpm.msc, then you have to check on the status, the tpm is ready for, for use. If you have it, good. And then, if you want to play Valorant, we have to check if you have, if you have secure boot. So press Windows key, press Windows key, type msinfo, and here, in the information secure boot state, it has to be on. Then we have to create a partition. So before you do that, you have to do a few things. First of all, press Windows key, we have to turn off hibernation, we have to turn off restore point, and turn off virtual memory. To do that, follow these steps. Press Windows key, type restore point, and you have to make sure that local disk C restore point is disabled. So just delete it, apply, yes, okay, then press Windows key again, go to advanced system settings, then go to advanced tab, then go to performance, then go to advanced, then virtual memory, change it, automatically manage paging file, and set no paging file. Click OK, 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 then press Windows key, type CMD, run it as administrator, type power CFG hibernate on. After that, you can restart your PC. Then you can press Windows key, go to disk management. MSC, and then we have to shrink the partition. Right click on it, click shrink partition, and now I'm gonna shrink it by 60 gigs. I recommend having at least 60 gigabytes. Then we have to create a partition, next, next. I'm gonna leave it on D, and I'm gonna change the name to new windows. As you can see, we've created the partition. Then press Windows key, then we have to turn off the defender. So we have to go to Windows Security, then you do virus and threat protection, then viruses and threat protection settings, and turn off real-time protection, yes. Then we can open install windows without USB, then run install windows as administrator, and now we have to select our ISO. So just select it, and just wait until it fully loads. Now type the drive letter, so for me it was D, press enter, and wait for it. Okay, once it's done, press any key and then restart your PC. Now you should be able to see two Windows options. So for me it's four because I have multiple systems, but for you, you should see Windows, Windows 11 and your old Windows. The one in the top left corner is gonna be your new Windows. So just select this Windows. Don't worry if it takes some time, it's just a very big ISO, so you'll just have to wait. Then it's gonna restart again, and once you see it again, just select the top option again. Then you have to wait. And now we're getting to get into Windows. Then you should be in Windows. Then open the top Windows again. And let's start. Let's go to After Install folder and start by changing your date and time. So let's say you want to have German language. So you're going to change your time zone first to Germany. Then you're going to click Sync now. And then you go to Language and Region. And here you want to add the language. Here you're gonna find your language that you wanna add. For me, it's gonna be German. And you gotta wait a second. And here, unselect everything but language back. Don't select set as my Windows display language. We're gonna put it at the end. Then go to Essentials. And here we will want to install some essential programs. So if you go to Task Manager, all the installers here I in silent install so the GUI will not pop up. And you can see it installing in Task Manager. So let's start with 7-zip, run it. Then you can go to 7-zip, run it after install. Then you can activate your Windows with KMS activation. Just press 1, then press any key, then close it. Then run DirectX setup and wait for it to install here. Then install OpenShell, then press your Windows key, and then click OK. Then run Visual C++. 
and then go back to app change cell folder and we're gonna go to the drivers and we're gonna start with the other drivers so go to sdio then run sdi x64 and here you want to select download indexes only here you only want to download usb drivers and vme drivers sata drivers and your ethernet drivers or wi-fi drivers so skip all the chips drivers and for me i'm gonna install my ethernet and vme storage controller and my wi-fi and i'm gonna install it once it's done you can just close snappy driver installer and then go back to drivers and depending on your graphics card select the right folder for amd skip to this part so i have nvidia so i'll do nvidia so guys if you have 3000 or below graphics card then go to the 3000 and below folder if you have 4000 series what's the difference the first the 4000 series has the newest graphics card and 3000 series and below has a little bit older driver so if you want to have the newest driver you can go 4000 series i have gtx 1060 so i will go to 3000 and below and depending if you want to use geforce experience or not just select what you want so i don't want to use geforce experience so i'm just gonna install the driver it's already a minimal installation driver then press agree and continue next and click close then click ok and then go back to after install go download the newest amd driver then extract it open it go to packages drivers display ut6 ai enf and delete everything except for the last three files like on the video go to device manager find your display adapter and continue with the installation just like i did then go back to our folder and install ccc2 installer the next part we're gonna install all the programs that you need so to install a program you just have to double click on whatever you want make sure to install all the programs that you need now because later you might have some issues with installing the program so do this now so i'm just gonna double click on discord for example epic games spotify theme and valiant so let me teach you how to install valiant without reinstalling so you'll have to click it on advanced options and here you have to select the path then you have to find the old location where you had valorant installed so for me it's going to be on the g drive then you have to click on riot games click ok and then click install and as you can see you should see repairing that will mean that you don't have to reinstall then log into your discord and everything and now you have to wait for your game that it can read from your drive once you see this message you can just close Valorant and it's already installed. Then let's then let me teach you how to move Fortnite. So open Epic Games. Once you install the Epic Games, go to library, then click on Fortnite, then go to your file explorer, then go to this PC. Then you have to find the location of your Fortnite game. It's usually located on your SSD in program files, Epic Games, Fortnite. And here you have to change the name to Fortnite One. Then you want to click install here then you have to uncheck auto update options select select everything but free download streamed assets and core and battle royale click apply then browse the path then go select it then go to program files epic games and select folder so that should be your path then install it close this window then you can click on the three dots, click cancel, then go back to this folder, delete Fortnite, and change change Fortnite one name to just Fortnite. Then, then resume it, and then it should verify your files to be able to download the game. I didn't have the game up, updated, so it does download for me. And it should verify your game. On Epic Games, go to your settings, then settings, uncheck everything here and here and add these commands to the fortnite launch options so how to move the games on steam go to steam then go to settings then go to broadcast turn off broadcasting then remote play disable it then go to cloud disable it then go to storage and here we're gonna click add drive then you're gonna select let me choose another location then click ok and here you have to find your C folder. So it's usually gonna be, so it's just gonna be in program x64. And now you have to find Steam, select it, then you can select this drive. And, and here you should be able to see all the games that you had installed. 
then you can make this drive default by clicking on the three dots and make the drive default then go to interface and uncheck and uncheck these options then make sure to turn off every single program and then go to after install folder again then go to windows configuration then we're gonna con configure your audio go to audio then right click on every unused device and just click disable i don't have my headphones connected so i'm gonna leave it on then go to recording and disable everything yet you don't need then you can click on your playback thingy properties then go enhancements and disable all enhancements then click apply okay then go back to windows configuration go to configure network adapters run gaming internet as administrator it's basically auto tuning then go to network adapter settings now find the network adapter that you use double click on it then go to properties then uncheck everything except for qos and ipv4 so these should be the only things that you have then click on ipv4 then properties advanced wins tcu net bios over tcp ip then okay okay close it close it go to powershell and cmd automation here run post install and then make sure to click space here it will move your files then run cmd automate and if it's stuck like at mine then you can right click on it then open file location right click cmd automate and edit it and here we want to cut it click ctrl s go back to the folder and run cmd automate as administrator then you can put that back in save it and run it again then go back then run powershell automate as administrator then let do its things then you can run visuals without administrator then go back to after install folder now you can go to csrss just run it yes okay then go to disable power savings run it as administrator then go back then go to event trace disable event trace then yes okay then could you go to your gpu optimization and here you want to select your gpu so i'm going to go for nvidia for amd skip to this part and then we're going to go to nvidia profile inspector then we're going to move no resize file then we'll click ok apply it close it then you can open msi afterburner so if you overclock your graphics card just make sure to put your overclock here so for me that's how my overclock looks don't copy it if you didn't test it these are the values that work well for me then apply it now we're gonna unlock the clock so you guys click on the curve editor you want to find 1100 millivolts just press on it then click l on your keyboard then close it then apply and then you want to save it to profile one always to profile one then you can close it then you can run nvidia telemetry then you want to open this little file here you want to copy it then press windows key type rec edit here you want to click on this computer and you want to paste it then press enter then press windows key type device manager folder and here you want to find your display adapters then double click on it and go to details click on property and scroll it a bit lower and find driver key then copy it here you want to do forward slash and paste it and in this folder you want to right click on it new e word 32 bit and type disable dynamic v state then press enter change the value to one enter and you can close it then you want to right click on your monitor show more options and select your nvidia control panel and adjust image settings with preview here you want to select use the advanced 3d 3d image settings and apply then you can go to manage 3d settings and here you want to change low latency to, to ultra or on i found ultra better when it comes to game responsiveness so i'm gonna go with ultra then configure surround and physics processor and select nvidia then change your resolution here i'm gonna stick to this resolution because I'm, i have a capture card but you want to select your highest refresh rate here and apply then you can adjust your color settings here in 
adjust desktop size and position, you want to select no scaling, display and override the scaling mode set by games and programs. Then click apply, then yes, then close it. Go to AMD settings and proceed to follow these settings. Then we want to lock the AMD clock. Go to Performance, then Tuning, select Manual. Then set the minimum GPU frequency to 100 MHz below the maximum frequency. Turn on VRAM tuning, and I like to put memory tuning to fast timing. Then you can tune your fans. Power tuning is optional. Then open MSI Afterburner. Save the profile and turn it on the startup. Then go to Settings and check Disable ULPS. Open Auto Runs. Go search AMD on top. Turn off this bloatware services. Then open services and make sure you turn these off. Then you want to go back to GP optimization, set, set stretch resolution, and here you want to go to custom resolution utility, open it here. Most of the time you can disable established resolutions and standard resolutions don't do this on laptops only do it if you have a monitor so i'm gonna delete all here none here then go to extensions blocks then go to edit then i'm gonna delete everything that isn't my main resolution delete 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 tp resolutions as well okay just watch this uh, how to set up your stretch resolution then go to extensions block click edit then you can just delete every resolution that you don't need then delete tv resolutions then click on the on your main resolution click edit then copy it click ok add it paste it then change the timings you have few options exact reduced cvtrp or native pc or cvt standard first of all i would advise cvtrp standard then you can just enter your resolution like 1280 by 960 or any resolution that you want you just press ok 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 then you can click restart 64 if we now go to display settings then advanced display settings then display adapter settings and we actually select the resolution that we want so 1280 by 960 240 hertz in my example apply it keep changes you will see that the resolution is scaled properly. So we have a real display scaling. Then go to interrupt affinity tool, then go install ADK setup. Here, leave it on install the windows to this computer, install path, go to next, then click on no, next, accept. And here you just want to select Windows performance toolkit. So that's how it should like. Click install. And once it's installed, Go back to C drive, go to bin, then go to scripts and run expert as administrator. Then go back to C, report, and here you can see the usage of different drivers. So for example, NBL DD MKM is going to be the NVIDIA card. So this is probably going to be my network card and we just want to offload it. So go back to the folder, go to optimization, interrupt affinity tool go to interrupt policy device manager and here you want to find your devices so i'm going to set up my realtek network controller and tp-link wireless adapter to a different core to offload it out of core zero so i'm going to do it like that i'm going to type r and i'm going to put mask i'm going to put it on cpu4 then okay then okay then yes okay and then I'm gonna go and run the band script once again. And here you want to upload your graphics card, USB controller, your NVMe drive, your network card to a different core. To offload your USB mouse, then just go to find PCI bridge to bridge, then composite bus, then you gotta find your mouse and your keyboard. And here we gotta offload the entire, entire controller 
then go to properties, then go to details, property, type P, wise, and you have to find physical device object name. Then take a look on it here, then go to interrupt affinity, and let's search for USB. And as you can see, device object name is the same as here. So I'm gonna set the mask, then we wanna go to MSI utility, then you open it, and then you could set it up on undefined. Some people like to put it on high, I don't know, honestly I'm not 100% sure, just put it on undefined, then apply it and okay, and make sure that the graphics card is in the MSI mode. Then go back, go to process lasso, open process lasso, then click continue, then you should have it here in the bottom right corner, click on it, then go to updates, check every, never, then go to file, import, then go to this PC, see after install, optimization, process lasso and comp, then press OK. Then here in the bottom right corner you can close process lasso, click exit process lasso, then click do not ask me again and click no. And they're gonna be running in the background. Then rename to smart screen, open a sudo, drag smart screen, enable privileges and let run, then close it, close it, then go back. Then they enable Spectre, Spectre Meltdown, first run on sudo, enable privileges, and drag this command until AMD microcode, then run it, then you can close it. Then you want to open Inspector, and for AMD you want to enable Spectre, and for Intel you want to disable it. Keep that in mind that it's gonna be an important thing for face identity, you would probably have to have it on. Then close it, then strip the browser, then click it on whatever browser you're using. Then go back to optimizations. Then go to Windows 32 party separation. If your main game is Valorant, then I then I suggest short fixed to A. Yes. And if you play Fortnite, then I suggest long fixed and 1A. Or long or long variable 14. My main game is gonna be Valorant, so I'm gonna go for short fixed to A. Then yes. It's dependent on your PC, so it's better, so it would be the best to test it for yourself. Which value is the best? Okay, now go to services, then remove yellow services, open outruns, click agree, and here you want to delete everything here in the log on top. You want to leave OpenShell, Vanguard, then you can uncheck CMD, you can uncheck Chrome, Edge, and A, and A, EPP, EPP, you can uncheck it. Then you can uncheck Epic Games, Font Cache, Steam Client Service, and VMP Network. Then for the Bluetooth modem, you can uncheck it and don't uncheck anything else. Then go back to Services. This step is optional and it can break some Windows features. So if you want to have the best compatibility, you don't want to disable it. But if you want to have the best performance, then follow this step. Open and sudo. Then enable all privileges and drag services disable, then run it, and your PC is gonna restart. Let's give it some time for it to restart. If it gets stuck, then just restart it as I do, and then select Windows 11 Tweaking Guy. Now go back to App to Installer, then open Device Manager, and open Device Manager, and here we're gonna start from the bottom, and here we're gonna start from the bottom. We're gonna go to Software Devices. If you have anything here in software devices, make sure to disable it. Then go to mice and open keyboards and drives. Then disable mouse and keyboard power saving features. So events. Then go to disk drives. Go to policies and uncheck it. Then go view devices by connection. Now you want to disable useless stuff like, like useless PCI bridges to bridges ports. Like here. PCI bridge to bridge, you can disable it, disable it, disable the next one. If it's not connected to anything, disable, yes. Then go view resources by connection. And here you want to scroll down everything in memory that you don't need motherboard resources. Motherboard resources, you can just disable it. Don't disable anything that's that has the other thing. Then scroll up. And here, as you can see, everything that that says motherboard resources is already deleted. Then you can close task manager, then you can close device manager, go device cleanup, control A and delete everything. 
then go back to after install go to startup make sure to select everything and just move it to the startup folder then go to oc here you want to oc ram cpu and gpu for that make sure to check out my link in the bio i'm gonna do a plugin for you then go to after oc here you want to go to auto runs and make sure you don't have any bloater enabled make sure that that these things are stay here go to services and turn on vanguard vgc if you want to play Valorant, then go back then go to cleanup then you can clean up all your chunks and rebel uninstaller here you can uninstall you can uninstall useless stuff with it so for example i don't want mozilla which i don't know to boot the script so for example if you don't want to use chrome i'm gonna uninstall it by just double clicking on it and i'm gonna uncheck mega system restore point before i install continue i'm gonna uninstall it then click advanced then click scan then select all delete yes then gonna go up to after after oc again move games to update then i'm gonna move run this script and here you wanna select the drive letter for your old windows so for me it's d now letter for your new windows so it's c and now d for directory in my fortnite in my fortnite and valent files are gonna be moved here then go type windows key type local update after send as local enter you can go to update to see again here in SKU when you can do your hidden bias settings and then do timer resolution you can put timer resolution benchmark here first of all you want to run timer resolution the patch as administrator then you want to restart your pc then select windows 11 tweaking guy then you want to go to up to install go to oc go to your cpu run stress test of your choice so i'm gonna run occt then you want to go back to after install after oc timer resolution and here you want to have this timer resolution benchmark you want to put it on the desktop then you want to run the stress test so i'm gonna use this then i'm gonna start it start it and then make sure to run timer resolution benchmark and let it run for a few minutes once it's done then go to file explorer then go to your c drive and then look at results you want to have your deltas very low around zero point then you want to open your then you want to stop stop the stress test close it open your browser go type plotly plotly chart maker and accept it then go there click import then drop the results txt then trace type line on X select requested resolution MS and Y select Delta MS. So let's say these are your results. So your results should probably look like a strain light going up with a peak on the left side. So here you basically want to find the lowest value possible. So for me, it's going to be 0 0.558. So now to change the value of your timer resolution, you're going to click on Windows key and R, then type shell, semicolon startup. As you then can see, right click on set timer resolution, go to properties. And here in resolution, you want to type in the number that you had. So for example, I had 558, so I'm going to type here 5580. Then click apply click ok and then you can close it and you're set to go thank you guys so much for watching if you need help you're gonna have a link to bio for my discord you can join there someone is gonna help you for sure if you guys want to get your pc optimized by me overclocking everything from a to z me preparing your pc for you then check out my website tweakingguy.com and if you want to support me there's gonna be a link in the bio this is going to help my channel in the future. There's also going to be more guides in the future. This Windows, this ISO is going to get updated. So make sure to follow me, leave a like, and share it to the friend that needs it. Thank you.